Okay, so I'm going to have a bit of a rant today. Feel free to not watch the video and just listen to the audio. Try to keep it to about 10 minutes. Um, these are just reflections that I've had from recent calls with primarily new clients, uh, as well as, I guess, a post-reflection summary of, of what I spoke about recently at Silverback. One thing that we hear a lot and that I am probably guilty of parroting, and I don't think this is incorrect. I think that it just lacks further substance and context because everything requires context because everyone can take everything out of context these days. Is one thing that we hear a lot is TRT takes time to work. And I think that this is a lackluster definition of this paradigm. I think it's better to look at it from the angle that TRT takes time to do the work required. And this isn't going to be some kind of mental masturbation rant on work hard, blah, 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 blah. There's enough of that crap on the internet already. And I think there's a lot of people who actually say it much more eloquently than I could. But I think people need to understand this because this is one of the key areas where people's expectation management falters significantly. And this is also where you see a lot of people get completely different results from TRT. And you get a side of the camp who's very happy with the results and another side of the camp who are wondering why they didn't get the same results as the other guys when they're injecting the same amount of testosterone or doing the exact same protocol. And they're wondering why there's a disconnect between where they're at and where these other people are at. And I understand that from the outside in, it's going, okay, well, what can I do to change my protocol? Should I swap to cream? Should I do daily injections? Should I up my dose? Should I add proviron? Should I add HCG? Should I take a microdose of thyroid? Should I start using metformin? Blah, 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 blah. And although all those adjuncts, depending on the individual, may edge you closer towards the goal you are trying to get to, they will be far from the leaps and bounds that people are looking for in the magic pill because the magic pill doesn't exist. It only exists in the marketing campaigns of people selling the magic pill. So TRT takes time to do the work required. I would argue that TRT does not work if you give it time, if you don't change your habits. I think that the reason why TRT takes time to work is that it allows people a window of opportunity to get their shit together and to consistently practice the habits, routines, and processes that they need to for a window of time long enough to allow them to get back on track. And this window of time or the amount of effort required will vary based on how far off track you are, one. Also, the other factor that people need to look at is that it really depends on how many skills you have for self-care, self-development, self-discipline, or general high-level executive functioning in terms of being able to actually focus and exert your will and not give in to shitty impulses and hedonism and degenerative shit. It depends on your baseline level of that capacity as well, because that is something that can be built and that is something that can be honed and that is something that can be developed. But if you increase someone's testosterone, and you don't teach them how to, one, become better versions of themselves, and two, the importance of actually practicing that. If you give someone something that is going to be disinhibitive, and they're a dickhead, it's just going to make them more of a destructive dickhead. So when people say, oh, I just need to be more true to myself, what if you're a cunt? That might not be a net positive for anyone. So when it comes to this idea of looking at TRT takes time to work, I think if you continue the habits and you continue the patterns that one either came as a result of your low hypergonadal state where people often seek short-term gratification or they are leaning towards procrastination and avoidance and patterns of fear, or you continue to practice the bullshit diet and lifestyle patterns that led you to having low testosterone in the first place, and I'd say there's about a 50-50 split.
I think there can be a huge disconnect between the realities and people's expectations of this, because if you continue without actually changing your patterns of behavior, you're just going to be a higher testosterone version of the same person who was depressed and anxious before. And this will not net enough of an outcome for it to significantly change your subjective experience of being alive. So with all that being understood, or at least communicated in a way that it can be heard, I think it's good to go back to the analogy that I've used for some time, which is that TRT gives you the foundation to get the results that you deserve. And that is the most important thing, because I have met a substantial amount of people over the last few years, both in consultations and out of consultations, who deserve to feel like shit because they do things that make you feel like shit. If you binge drink every weekend, you're going to feel like varying degrees of shit throughout the week, depending on whether it's Monday or Friday, depending on where the outcome of not spending your weekends productively, whether that comes from doing things that actually help recover and nourish you, like spending time with people that you care about sober, or practicing self-development in your spare time rather than practicing getting fucking written off and then nursing a hangover for a day. I think the outcome of that can be equally deleterious. But a lot of the time, people feel exactly how they should feel. And people feel the way they should feel as an internal subjective reflection of the external life that they live and the circumstances that surround them. Now, some people get dealt a shitty hand and that sucks, but some people also play a shitty hand. So there's some degree of accountability that needs to fall on the individual. But most importantly, people need to look at the opportunity to make change. And people need to look at the opportunity of going, okay, well, if I make change consistently over time, I could change the trajectory of my life and then be living life as the character who doesn't feel the way that I used to feel. If you change your diet from eating nothing but fucking garbage to eating the best possible diet ever, and people will contend what that is, let's just call it a meat-based organic paleo diet. And if anyone wants to cry about that, you're missing the point of what I'm saying. You will acutely feel better. Within a day, you'll feel better. Within a few days, you'll feel better. But you won't feel as good from that diet as you would feel if you had consistently eaten that diet all along. Because the cells in your body would be made up of much better nutrients. So it takes time for the chronic effects of nutritional change to impact you. But also, when you eat better and feel better... You will then live a better life and you will make better decisions and then having more energy and less stress over time will lead you to becoming a different person and living a different reality than you're currently experiencing. And testosterone is very much the same. There is definitely an acute dopaminergic shift. There is definitely an acute increase in mitochondrial function, reduction in stress levels, better feeling of well-being. Maybe you'll get hit with a bit of a urge of courage or bravery or a temper tantrum if you're particularly emotionally immature. Maybe you'll get hit with a temper the first time and you'll have to learn how to actually control it. You used to think that you had your temper under control, but you were actually just placid and afraid to say what you thought. Maybe you'll become an arrogant, obnoxious dickhead because you were only quiet because you were worried what people would think of you but you are actually still opinionated. These things happen all the time. And people need to learn to manage this more outspoken, disinhibited version of themselves. If something makes you more of who you are, then we'll really find out what you were like underneath, right? And you might have to curate that. That can be a difficult experience for people to navigate, especially if they don't know what's going on. It can be like a moody teenager, but who can... Drink and drive, hopefully not at the same time. So I think the most important thing that people need to understand with this is that if you start TRT and you're saying, okay, well, this is going to take a year or two to work. What do you mean by work? What are you trying to achieve? You're saying, well, I want to feel more masculine. I want to feel more confident. I want to feel more brave. I want to be fitter. I want to be physically more powerful. I want to have more confidence. I want to be less insecure. 
if you sit around and stare at a wall for two years, it's not really going to move the needle very far in that direction. It might move it all by five or ten percent, sure. But that's still going to leave a ninety to ninety-five percent gap between your expectations and the reality of what you're experiencing. So it's important to look at TRT as a foundation, but then look at all the activities and habits that you can adopt as multipliers. And I would strongly recommend for people to go, okay, well, what do I actually need to do? Like, what's the actual executable here? What's the less esoteric and actual action I can take? And I think the best barometer for this is look at all the habits that you wish you'd adopted a year ago. If you look at where you're at now, you go, fuck, I wish I stopped binge drinking a year ago. I wish I started going to the gym a year ago. Or if you're me, I wish I started doing a whole bunch of mobility a year ago. And then I did. And it completely changed how I feel. So I think that's a good way to look at it. When in doubt, look and go, what do I wish I had already started doing a long time ago? And start doing it now. And consistently do it. And understand that the payoff in the short term versus the payoff in the long term is going to be different. And if you're not capable of delaying gratification, for daily habits and daily processes that don't completely manifest overnight, then you need to adopt the mindset of an adult because otherwise you're not going to get to where you need to go and you won't deserve to get to where you need to go. And that's fine. I think when it comes to daily habits that people can look at, I think taking care of the body and taking care of the mind are the things that we need to look at. I think we need to look after ourselves the way that we would look after people that we love and care about. And I think that men particularly suck at that. I don't think this stuff is rocket science. I think it's strategy and consistency. And I think it's logically understanding the why behind doing the things that we need to do, because that's just how I think male brains work. So Look at the things, look at this, look at the processes that you can get addicted to that are good for you. Find ways to make self-development a hobby. So if you want to learn martial arts, try them all. Pick the one with the best coach. That's what I did. Find someone in your life who holds you accountable. Find someone in your life who inspires you, who has traits that you would like to adopt and learn from them. CrossFit, yoga, Pilates, they're all good. Calisthenics is good. Endurance cardio is good. Steady state cardio is good. High intensity cardio is good. Bodybuilding is good. Powerlifting is good. They're all good. Whichever one you're going to do, find the one that you enjoy and do it. Ideally, do a big mix of all of them. You know, you'd get a, you'd get a much better ROI Unless you're trying to win a powerlifting competition, which if you're this far off track, that might be you know something to look at in the future. But I think you'd be better off doing a bit of all of them six days a week than doing powerlifting six days a week. You get more diversity, but you'd also get more challenge to overcome. I think that's valuable. I think doing things that you suck at for the sake of doing things that you suck at is very beneficial because it makes everything else easier by comparison. And I think I think that there is a degree that we need to father ourselves in these situations because fixing hypergonadism as an adult is it's not a unique experience but it's atypical i don't think it's that hard i don't i think it's difficult at the time to get up when the alarm goes off and i think it's difficult at the time to Go for the walk at the end of the day when you're tired. I think in the moment, all of those things are difficult, but I don't think they're that difficult. And I don't think doing good, positive self-care habits consistently is that hard. I think it might just be harder than what people are used to, but I think the payoff is worth it. I think the ROI is massive. And I think it just comes down to understanding that, as I said before, TRT takes time to work because it takes time to do the work to become the person that you want to be. That's all.